Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are looking at practice problem number five for drawing shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams of various beams uh, subjected to various loadings. Um, in this video, we've got a cantilever beam with some point loads and distributed loads. And in this case, the support for the cantilever beam is on the right hand side. So I just want to demonstrate that um, sometimes the support will be on the left, sometimes it will be on the right, and there's no reason to panic because it's basically the same uh, same analysis as uh, as the last video where the support was on the other end. So in order to start, we need to figure out the reactions here. So this is going to be a y, and uh, we're also going to have a moment here, which is uh, let's call that m a. And it turns out that a y is 60 kilonewtons, and m a is 160 kilonewton meters. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and set up our shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams. With those grid lines, every time we have a point of interest, which is the start or stop or change of a distributed load or a point load. Um, and uh, so there we go. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to draw our free body diagram uh, starting from the left-hand side like we've been doing uh, in all the other videos. So we're going to be starting here with uh, 20 kilonewtons pressing down on the very left hand side and we're going to be taking a virtual cut just to the right of this and so we're going to be having shear pressing up. Now like we did in the last video we're only going to consider the uh, the forces in the y direction. We're going to leave off the moments here because we don't need the moments to draw the shear force diagram. We're just going to do the force balance and that will give us the shear as we go along. So we're going to start with a shear of minus 20 because this arrow, the shear force is pointing up for that cancelling of the forces in the y direction. And where we have a shear force pointing up to the right of a virtual cut, that means it's opposite the positive sign convention. So it's going to have a negative value. So it'll just be negative 20. So let's go and throw that on our shear force diagram, maybe like that. And then in this region, we're not changing the shear, so we can just extend that as a straight line right across, and this will be at that value of minus 20 kilonewtons. All right, uh, just if we extend our free body diagram just to the right of this marker, an infinitesimally small distance over, then we have an infinitesimally small inclusion of the distributed load, and basically that is going to be zero because it's infinitesimally small. Um, so just to the right of this, we, our shear force will still be 20 kilonewtons, but as we go further, um, let's if we extend our free body diagram just to the left of this point load, and we update this, uh, we update the free body diagram here to include the one meters worth of this 10 kilonewtons per meter. So that is a total force pressing down um, of 10 kilonewtons. So the shear force then just to the left of this, we have 20 pressing down, we have 10 pressing down. So this has to be 30 pressing up and that's still opposite the positive sign convention. So that means that uh, right here on the left hand side, we're going to be down to uh, minus 30 kilonewtons for our shear. And that is a nice straight line connecting those because of this constant distributed load. All right, so that's minus 30. Now, when we draw our extender free body diagram just to the right of this marker, we have to include this point load. So we'll just throw that on our free body diagram. Now this free body diagram, when we include that point load of 20 kilonewtons, um, it's going from the left-hand side all the way over to just to the right of this. Um, so we have 20 going down, 20 going down, 10 going down, total of 50 kilonewtons pressing down. This has to be 50 kilonewtons pressing up. Again, that's negative. So we're dropping down to uh, negative 50 kilonewtons just to the right of this point load. So that's negative 50. All right, and then if we, again, if we extend our free body diagram just to, the, uh, to this marker here, basically, we have to just include uh, one more meters worth of this 10 kilonewtons per meter distributed load. So what I would do is I would just cross out that 10 and this now becomes 20 because we have 10 kilonewtons uh, per meter times two meters. And then we have the, the first point load and the second point load all pressing down. So we're going to get a shear force um, basically on both sides of this marker line um, of uh, negative 50, no, not negative 50, negative 60, right? 20, 20, 20, there we go. Uh, so it's gonna drop down 10, uh, 10 kilonewtons there. So that will bring us down to minus 60. That's a linear. That's the same slope as this. Again, if we've been watching the other videos, um, if the point load wasn't here, this would just be the same slope all the way along the constant distributed load, but that point load is going to step us down by its own magnitude there. So um, now we are at minus 
60 kilonewtons, and then we're going to finish off uh, the shear in this whole region because nothing's changing here. So the shear is going to be constant along that section, and we're going to end up with minus 60, basically right across this flat section. Now what we want to do is we want to check that. Does that make sense um, based on uh, the free body diagram that we have up here? So we'll draw a another free body diagram of the of the beam here. Uh, looking from the right hand side, just taking a virtual cut just to the left of that. So we know that we have a Y pressing up that is 60 kilonewtons, and then we have to have for that uh, sum of forces in the Y direction, we have to have some shear pressing down. Obviously, that has to be 60 kilonewtons pressing down. And then where we're to the left of a cut, if our arrow is pointing up for shear, that means it's a positive value. If it's pointing down, it's a negative value. So we have to have negative 60, and that's exactly what we said here. And so it looks like we've done that correctly. All right, moving on. So let's start. Uh, let's start a, just an updated free body diagram here. Looking again, starting at the left hand side, uh, but this time we want to include the internal bending moment on it. So we know that we have uh, 20 kilonewtons pressing down right here. Uh, we know that the internal shear in this region is 20 kilonewtons pressing up. We've already determined that. Um, and we also know that there's going to be a, an internal moment here. Um, let's just label that as M for now. Okay, so when we look at this, this distance here, if we're taking an infinitesimally tiny section or just a, a slice as close to the end of the beam as possible, this dx is basically uh, tending towards zero. And where we have a force couple with the distance between them that uh, tends to zero, then the moment that's caused by those will also tend to zero. So for a true free body diagram for static equilibrium, if this force couple is not creating any moment, then the internal moment at that point has to also be equal to zero. So our bending moment diagram is going to start off at zero. Now what we can do is we can proceed along the length of the beam using the method where we're taking the area of the shear force diagram, and that is basically the change in magnitude of the bending moment diagram, where negative areas, which is the case for all of these sections on the shear force diagram, will cause that change in magnitude to, uh, to, to push us towards the negative side of the bending moment diagram. So when we look at the area here of this first region, it's base times height, this is a rectangle, and uh, where we have rectangles, we get a linear change in magnitude on the bending moment diagram. And where we have uh, basically any area with a sloped line, we're getting that parabolic change. So to start in section one here, base times height is just one meter times 20 kilonewtons. That's going to be equal to 20 kilonewton meters. So that's a change in magnitude. So we're going to start off, it's going to bring us down to about here, and we'll call that minus 20 kilonewton meters. So we get that nice straight line in this section. Okay, looking at section two, um, we actually have a composite shape in here. And then there's also in section three, there's gonna be a composite shape there as well. So in section two, the area of this rectangle is base times height. So it's just a one times 20. So the, the rectangle here is gonna contribute 20 kilonewton meters to the change in magnitude here. And then the triangle here is one half base times height. So one half times base is one meter times the height of this triangle is 10 kilonewtons. So that's going to add five kilonewton meters. So the total here is 25 kilonewton meters. So that's gonna drop us from 20, push us down 25 kilonewton meters. So that's gonna take us down to negative 45 kilonewton meters. And this section is also a parabolic curve and it's going to curve like that. All right, when we look at the next section here, base times height, so the base is one meter, the height is 50 kilonewtons. So we get uh, 50, the area of the rectangle is 50, and then the area of the triangle is one half times base times height, so the base is one, and the height of this triangle is 10. So that's, uh, yeah, that's a total of five kilonewton meters area. So the total when we add those together is 55. So we're gonna go from 45, we're gonna add 55 units of kilonewton meters going down and that's gonna take us down to minus 100 kilonewton meters. And again, because this has the sloped line in it, then we are getting this, uh, this curvature, which is a little bit parabolic. There we go. Um, and then the last section down here, 
this is just a rectangle, so the area is one uh, just base times height. So base times uh, 60 is that height in kilonewton meter or kilonewtons that gives us 60 kilonewton meters. So that's going to drop us uh, from 100 down another 60 units down linearly to 100 and negative 160 kilonewton meters. Now, as always, we do want to check to make sure this makes sense. So let's draw our free body diagram. Uh, on the right hand side taking our virtual cut just to the left of the support we know that we have at AY acting on that that was 60 kilonewtons we know that the shear force in this region was negative 60 kilonewtons we already uh, determined that so that was 60 kilonewtons negative that was pressing down all right we know that we have MA acting in this clockwise sense here of uh, 160 kilonewton meters and then we have some we'll need to have some internal moment here that we're going to calculate and we'll just call this M for now well if we're taking this cut uh, an infinitesimally close distance here then again same logic applies where we're gonna call this distance here DX if this tends towards zero then the moment caused by this force couple tends to zero and then, then the internal moment here has to cancel out the moment here caused by the reaction so this has to be equal to 160 kilonewton meters in the counterclockwise sense basically the opposite of that now where we have an internal moment to the left of a cut that's going counterclockwise that's opposite the positive sign convention so that means that this moment we would call this negative 160 kilonewton meters and that's exactly what we're getting here on the bending moment diagram we're saying that it is a negative 160 kilonewton meters just to the left of the support for that internal moment.